Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be the sixth episode in the series where I'm building this guitar right here. Now, I'm calling it the uh, E-War Stingray, but it has a remarkable resemblance to the Fender Meteora. Only in the outside shape. Everything else is totally, uh, totally mine, but the outside shape is a Meteora. Because I really dig it. I think it's a great looking guitar. Anyway, uh, we've been working on the, the body for the last few episodes, and it's time to set the body down for a bit now and give it a rest because it's time to start working on the neck. So if, uh, if you've all watched any of my series of videos, at least the last several guitars, you'll know that I love doing stripes in my neck. And not only uh, stripes, I like doing the tapered stripes. So if you see in this guitar right here, these stripes, they, get, they start wider at the bottom and they taper their way up towards, the, uh, up towards the headstock. So the taper of my stripes follows the actual taper of the neck. So these two outside pieces are the same width all the way through the guitar, basically. Um, anyway, and that's what I really like to do. And I've kind of refined my stripes on every guitar I've built. And this, was, this is my latest guitar. And this one I think is really cool. I did... The, the main uh, body of the wood on the outside here was the, you know, the main body, which in this case was Wenge. And then I used two stripes of blood wood. And then inside the blood wood, I used two equal width stripes of uh, maple. And then a blood wood right up the middle. And I just think that is really, really cool looking. I really like the way this came out. It's kind of like one wide stripe made of multiple pieces instead of multiple stripes going up the back of the guitar, if that makes any sense. So, and I'm going to do the same thing with this guitar here. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to mimic that same, uh, the same stripe design, only in the woods for, for this guitar, for the Stingray. So the woods in this uh, neck are going to match the woods in the body, at least in color and tone. So the main part of the body, the, the majority of the wood in this guitar is going to be this black cherry. And then I've got the zero coat uh, for my scratch plate uh, thing up here. So for the neck, what I'm going to do is the main body of the neck, I've got this uh, nice piece of uh, eight quarter cherry, uh, black cherry, and that's going to make the main bulk of the neck, or the, basically the two outside pieces of the neck. And then I'm going to make my stripes. I've got a really nice piece of uh, Wenge right here that is really super flat and straight. It's a piece of uh, three quarter, and it's about two inches tall. That should be just enough to get my two stripes out of, uh, out of it, the two outer stripes, so it'll go cherry on the outside then the next two stripes in are going to be the uh, Wenge and then I'm going to move inside of that and I'm going to use this piece of maple right here it's a piece of soft maple and it's nothing too uh, nothing too wild about the grain or anything but it's just a nice very light color which will then do the two stripes inside of the Wenge and then I'll come back in the very center and I'll do a thin straight stripe of Wenge right up the middle so I think that'll look really cool um, but the first thing we're going to have to do before we get to tapering and everything, we're going to get into is i got a special jig I use for making my tapers on the bandsaw. I've got that jig, and I'll get into the, the, the sizes and how I kind of figured it all out as I'm going and the thing. But what we're going to have to do first is getting uh, milling away and planing away in these boards to get them all perfectly flat, straight, and square so we could then begin cutting our tapers and, and getting it all together. So... Anyway, why don't we go on over to the joiner and start uh, going away with that right now and getting rolling.
Okay, so these guys came out good. I've got my uh, two outside pieces. I have nice uh, clean edges on them. I'm um, playing the front and back on everything here. So I'm in good shape, uh, and I've got plenty of wood to work with here. Uh, so before we go over to my jig on the bandsaw and start ripping these tapers on everything, I thought we'd go over to uh, Adobe Illustrator, and I'll show you how I drew this and how I determine the width of the stripes and, and all that kind of stuff. So let's go on over there real quick, and then we'll head over to the bandsaw and start cutting. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator. And, uh, and as you can see here, I've got a neck drawn out with these stripes on it. So what, what I start out with, basically, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. What I started out with was this outside rectangle, which is 3 inches wide and 36 inches long. Now, obviously, 36 inches is a lot longer than I need for a neck blank or for a neck, because the neck's probably 27 inches long or something. But you need a little bit extra when you do a scarf joint, which we're going to do on this. And I like having, I like being able to cut off the end couple inches of the blank in each end, especially when you're gluing up parts like this, because that's where my alignment pins are going to be. And if there's any kind of a variation in the in the tapers and when I uh, join things and stuff, it's going to be on the end. So it's just kind of best to lop off the end a couple of inches and get rid of that. So. Anyway, so what you see here is the uh, basically the end result, and I kind of colored the to I kind of colored the neck so you can see uh, the variation in the wood tones. That's about what you know I thought it would help visually to see this. So what I did first is I just drew my three by thirty six uh, rectangle, and then I brought in a drawing of the uh, fretboard. Okay, and let me zoom in a little bit. And then all I did was I take and I I, ex I drew the a line over the top of the edge, each edge of the fretboard, and I extended it all the way to both ends of my uh, neck blank. Okay, and I did that on both sides, and you can see now I have a two tapered lines that are the exact width of my fretboard, which is the exact width and taper of the neck. Okay, so then what I did is I came down to this end. And uh, I measured this end, and I went over the other end, and I measured this end, okay? And I determined that there was three quarters of an inch of difference in the two ends uh, over a 36 inch span. So what I did was I went and I measured a couple other guitars I had made, and I wanted to see about how wide I were I was right where the stripes uh, uh, meet the very end of the headstock, like way up at the end of the guitar. I measured, and I actually measured about where I, how wide my stripes were down here at the end of the, uh, at the end of the neck too, up under the, the neck pickup. And, and this was around, you know, it varied. They were five eighths or, or, you know, three quarters of an inch or whatever. So, so what I had to do is I've got I've got this information now. I've got the width of my stripes at the end of the neck. I want to be about three quarters of an inch, five eighths, maybe half, something like that. And I know that there has to be a three quarters of an inch difference between these stripes on this end and the other end of the the other end of the neck at the uh, up under the the neck pickup. So I started with three quarter, and then so that would make the other end inch and a half. Okay, three quarters plus three quarters an inch and a half. And and then so I said, okay, well, how how many stripes do I want to have? And I I know this center one is divided in two, but that's really three stripes. I have two wenge and one maple stripe here in the middle. Uh, so I take my three quarters of an inch, the width here, and I divide by three. So that would give me a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter. Okay, and I take the other end, which is an inch and a half, and I divide by three, and that made this half, half, half. Okay, so now I wanted to have up at this end of the neck three stripes, each one a quarter inch wide. I simply copied this outside line and I moved it in here and I just started laying these out off of the center line. Okay, so I had my three quarter inch uh, uh, lines lined out down here and at the other end I had my three half inch lines lined out off of this end. And it looked basically like this. Although when I got that done, I said, you know, that's really too wide. I didn't really like it. It was just, it was a bit wider than it is here. And remember my headstock's probably gonna be down here somewhere. So if it's three quarters of an inch here, and my headstock, it was gonna be quite a bit wider. And I don't want this neck to be all stripes. I want it to be just half stripes going up the middle. 
So what I did then was I just, I would highlight these guys. I would take one stripe at a time and I would, I started moving them in. I started basically moving these guys around. In Adobe Illustrator, you can use your up and down arrows to move stuff in increments. And I believe, uh, I believe it's about 10 thousandths every time you click on it. So I'd move this one down six clicks and move this one up six clicks and I would move these two center ones accordingly. And I just kind of kept playing around with it till I arrived at this. And I like it. I think it looks good. And then so once I had something laid out that I thought I liked, I went ahead and laid my uh, fretboard on top of it to see if that looked right to me. And or sorry, not fretboard. This is the whole neck. So this is the neck drawing. And I laid it out on there and said, yeah, that's that's exactly what I want it to look like. So I felt like I had the right widths. I think it looks good on my neck. And, you know, the neck's going to wind up coming out somewhere out of the center of this thing. That's about how it's going to look right there. Um, of course, I'm going to probably make this neck just a little bit wider uh, than what I drew it here. So I could don't have to glue those little tips on there. Um, but anyway, I could take care of that. So anyway, so once all that was... Uh, once all that was drawn, I decided I liked it. I just came back here and I measured. So this end piece here, see I got 1.28 inches. My outside piece, it's going to have to be 1.28 inches from here to here. This first stripe on this end is 0.125. The second two are 0.100 each. So that center one, that center stripe is just a little bit wider than the two outside ones. So that's going to be 0.20. Uh, for the center one, and then 0.125 over here, and then 1.28 inches for the outside piece. And at the other end, same thing. I've got the, I've got my dimensions here: 0.38 for each of the Wenge stripes, uh, 0.44 for the center guy, and then these are 0.90 inches for each one of these. So I should take this information over to my bandsaw, be able to set my jig up and cut away, and I should have this end result uh, when it's all said and done if I follow this right. All right, so this is my little jig I use. It's, it's very simple. It's just got, I have a MDF base on it, and under that, I've got a spline that's screwed on here, glued and screwed to a piece of maple, and that fits right in the uh, track, the T-track of the bandsaw. Then I have this upper part here that's got these slotted holes in it and I have a piece of maple on it that's this has been joined very straight and everything and I could loosen those up and adjust it back and forth and it'll basically uh, I could set a taper on a board and run it through and when it cuts the bandsaw when this when this uh, track is in this T slot over here that bandsaw blade is right here so what I could do is I measure from the face of my fence to the edge here on both ends and I could set it whatever I want and when I cut it, that's my cut right there, and I have my nice tapered piece. So what I did with my uh, parts, after, after I drew them up on Adobe Illustrator, I came over here. And this is, by the way, this thing is 40 inches long, I think, but I have 36 marked out right here and 36 marked out on the other end. So right at 36, I take my little uh, calipers, and I set them to the proper dimension right here at 36 inches. And I locked that guy down. And then I went to the other end. I set the 36 inch point at the other end. This happened to be 1.58 inches. And this is uh, 1.2 inches. Now I did add, I added 0.3 inches to what I had in my drawing uh, because I want to get those little ears on the, on the headstock on this too without me having to glue anything on. So at any rate, so I've got those guys. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got my fence set on this thing and this is ready to go. So I just use this double sided sticky tape. And I run it right down there. I put it on the base of this. Make sure it's stuck down really, really good. Now I just take my piece here. Now, if you can see, I've got an XX on top of this guy. On all my parts, I labeled XX and 00. zero. That's because I already oriented the grain the way I wanted it to go. So I want to make sure I keep my XX up on this and do the same with the other outside piece. And I just want to line up here on my 36 inch deal right here and go ahead and smoosh it into that tape. And to just be absolutely sure 
because I don't want this thing falling off halfway through and messing up my deal. I'll use a little clamp here in a couple spots. We'll just make sure we get lots of extra pressure on that double-sided sticky tape. Okay, just like that. Now what we've got to do is go ahead and run this through the bandsaw on this other track and, uh, and then check it out and see how we did. Okay, so it's time to do the Wenge now. I've got it up here, and uh, so I've got to reset this. Now, uh, according to my drawing, I had to be at 0.38 on this end, but I'm going to add a few thousandths because I want to run this, do a light pass on the joiner once it's cut. So I'm going to run that about 40 thousandths over, and this end was going to be 1 eighth, and so now I need to set it instead of 1, 2, 5, I'm going to go 1.155. I don't know if when it's all said and done, 30 thousandths is enough extra, but, uh, but that's what this is all about. Everything I do in guitar building is kind of trial and error and seeing if we can learn from our mistakes. So let's try 30 thousandths. If not, next time we build one, we'll have to try something different. Okay, so these two guys came out really nice. They're very, very consistent in thickness. Um, but so now I've got, on each one of these, I've got one side that was joined off from before and one side that's the rougher bandsaw cut. And so I've got to get that smoothened out. And I've uh, learned over trial and error that I'm not good enough with a bench plane to make sure that this doesn't get out of square when I'm planing. I'm getting better, but still not good enough. So uh, my solution for that is to run this uh, face of this across the joiner. And of course, that thing is too thin and flimsy. Not that it's flimsy, it's pretty stiff, but it's too thin to run across the joint and keep it straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some double-sided sticky tape and stick it to this. This is the remainder of that piece of cherry from when I cut out my neck parts. And I just ran it through the joiner. It's plenty thick to, it's actually thicker than my parts here. So uh, I'm gonna use some double-sided sticky tape, stick these guys down one at a time and run them across the joiner equal number of passes. So if I take two passes off this, I'm going to take two passes off the other one. So they maintain the same thickness. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to stick these on right now and start doing that. Oh, and then here's my cutoff piece, the last piece that was left from the center of that board. And it's a little more than an eighth inch thick. Once I get these two guys joined up, I'm going to stick this on there and I'm going to join both sides of that because both sides are uh, band sawed. And I'm going to thin that down to as thin as I could possibly get it, maybe a 32nd of an inch thick. And, uh, and that's going to be our center stripe going up the center of the neck. So anyway, I'm going to stick these on and get cutting away. Okay, so I've got my two outside pieces of black cherry. I've got my two uh, Wenge wedges here. And I've got my center stripe out of Wenge too, the center, uh, center thing. And I think it's all looking very good. I think it's coming very consistent when I squeeze them together. I see really nice uh, uh, joints across them all. So I think it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna go ahead on over to the bandsaw and go ahead and take care of this maple uh, piece of milling. And I have to cut two of these just like the Wenge. And since I've already showed it, I'm not going to show all that. But uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes with these cut up, and we'll carry on with this neck. Okay, so that's how she's looking so far. I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased. Um, I've got all my stripes in there. i got my center thing in there. 
and I think that's looking really good. I am, I'm just, uh, I'm very happy. I got nice tight joints across the whole thing. It looks really good. And I think the color combination is good with our top too. We got a dark light thing going on and I think that's pretty cool. I think it's gonna look, I think it's gonna look really nice. So there's one other thing I wanna do before we glue this up. Well, a couple things. We gotta drill in our indexing pins, which we'll do here in a minute. But I think I wanna add two more. Oops. I just dropped a piece. That is one of the downsides of a split top bench. But that's okay. That only happens once in a while. Um, I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of veneer in there. In between the Wenge and the black uh, cherry, I want to do a light dark combination of veneer. So I've got some maple veneer here and I've got some fumed oak uh, veneer. And I think that's going to look pretty cool. So I'm going to cut these up real quick and get those ready to go. Then we're going to start gluing up. Okay, so we are totally set to glue this thing up. I've got my uh, neck blank here and I drilled the 3 8 holes in the ends and then I took a couple of 3 8 dowels and I whittled them down a bit so they're super loose because you want to be able to work quick with this. I've got 11 pieces to glue together here if you include those little veneer strips we just cut up. And uh, so I'm going to have to move quickly so I can't be monkeying around with these, uh, these dowels as I'm putting it together. And as soon as glue hits this wood, it begins to swell. So if those dowels were tight, uh, that would lock up on those dowels and I would never get this thing together. So I've got my piece of granite here, which I like to glue my neck parts up on because it's nice and flat. I've got a couple of gluing blocks. It's going to make sure we're, we're held down tight against it. I've got my clamps and I've got my uh, Ultra Cat glue. Uh, any of you that watch me, you know I like to use, uh, this is a PPR glue, which is a pre-catalyzed polymer resin glue or powdered resin, whatever. It's a really good glue and it's brown. And I like it. You do have to mix it up before each use, but it dries really, really hard. And it's a uh, super, super good glue. So anyway, uh, I'm going to mix this up and we're going to get spreading as fast as we can. And hopefully tomorrow morning when we wake up, we'll run this thing through the joiner and a planer and see how this thing came out. So I'm going to put a couple ounces of hot water in here and start mixing away. And we're going to glue this thing up. So I'm going to put these guys on the ends here. I want to make sure that all of these pieces are sucked down as far as they could possibly go. So I'm going to put these guys on here and get a couple of clamps, longer ones, clamping downwards. Let me get this closer to the edge. I want to just be sure I'm not having any kind of twisting. I'm clamping it down flat against the granite, which is very flat. And that's going to ensure that none of these pieces are bowed up or anything's twisted or anything. So.
Okay, all glued up. I guess we'll find out tomorrow how we did. All right, so there you go. There is our uh, finished neck blank right there. And I can't be happier. I think those uh, stripes came out really super cool. I love the way I, I wound up at the last minute. I did the light dark uh, combination of veneers on the outside of that wenge. And I just really think that's something that really makes that wenge uh, stand out beautifully. So anyway, I'm real happy. Uh, I wound up having to uh, use my bench plane over here to flatten this thing off. Because for some reason, as I was running it through my joiner, cleaning the glue off of one side, I was kind of getting a bit of a hump in the thing. And, uh, and I was getting dangerously close to my final thickness. So I thought, well, let me get off of there. And I set it up on my bench and I very carefully took my bench plane and flattened off the side, got it back to uh, perfectly flat and, and, and uh, planing out right. And then I took it over to my, uh, my uh, planer and planed off the other side to get it to the right thickness. So we're at three and five eighths of an inch wide. We're one and five sixteenths of an inch thick, which is still probably a sixteenth more than I'm gonna want it in the end, but I'll surface that off with my CNC machine as we're going. And, uh, but anyway, so that's it. That is how I do my neck blanks. Um, and I wanted to say too, uh, I believe this is a lot of work, okay? But I do believe that the right combination of woods, the right grain orientation, and uh, doing this laminated neck like this is going to make a more stable neck in the long haul than just a solid chunk of wood. So I could be wrong about that, but um, I'm kind of justifying doing this in part of it looks good, and the other part is it's going to produce a more stable neck. So anyway, I hope I hope you all dug this. Hope got, somebody got a little something out of it. And uh, if you come on back next week, we're going to work on a scarf joint in this thing and get rolling with that. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.